It's Alexander from Tilda. In this video, I want to show you a cool animation effect that works when you scroll. Here's what it looks like. Now, let's figure out how to make it. First, if you're not already signed up for Tilda, I suggest you do so and take a look at the effect from the inside. As a bonus, you get a two week free trial period, which will open up all of Tilda's features. After signing up, we go straight into the Tilda dashboard. Our first step is to create a new website. Let's give it a name and then create a website. Here, we can choose from a variety of templates, which have been broken down into categories, or start from scratch. Next, we use this intuitive interface to add blocks one by one, whether it's one of over 500 pre-designed blocks or a zero block that allows you to create your own unique design. Once you've edited the page, you need to publish the design by assigning it a URL address. You can now share the link with your colleagues, friends, or customers. So let's take a look at how the animation works. I copy the template ID, which is at the bottom right, go to my dashboard, click create new page, scroll all the way down and click enter template ID at the very bottom. Here I enter the number and the template with the animation settings has now been added to the project. Let's go to zero block and see how it all works. First, let's see how the racket animation is set up. To do that, click on the racket, open the element settings at the bottom right, or use the tab shortcut. Head over to the bottom step-by-step -step animation and click edit to see the settings. First off, we see that the event is on scroll. This means that the animation will play based on how many pixels our visitor has scrolled. This is followed by a sequence of steps. Let's look at the settings. The element covers a distance of 200 pixels. For those 200 scrolled pixels, it goes down the x-axis by minus 70 pixels and down the y-axis by minus 40 pixels. There is also a rotate setting of minus 35 degrees. That's the way we get the racket to move from point A to point B. Step two puts the racket even lower. And for the next 200 pixels, we have an X axis movement of 120 pixels and a Y axis movement of 360 pixels. The rotate value at this point is 15 degrees. All the steps are about the same. Now let's look at the settings of another element, the ball. Point A. The starting position is set. The point is already here on the racket. The element travels a distance of 1,273 pixels on the x-axis and 263 pixels on the y-axis to point B. Let me remind you that it all works like this in practice. Now for the most important question, how do you get to this point when we drop the objects and change their positions? It's not difficult to do. Let's go back to the editor and find the position of the ball on the right side of the step sequence. It's in step three. To make it easier, I'll add a shape and move it in place of the ball. That way I'll mark its position. As you might guess, the yellow square is a temporary object which I'll remove later. I'll now go back to the racket and position it where the ball will be in step three. That way I'll be sure that my object goes to where it needs to go. I can now remove the yellow shape and get the effect I wanted. Thank you. Use the step-by-step -step animation in your projects.